everyone, Back Photography here, back with another video, so thank you for joining me once again. Today we're going to be looking at how you can take amazing portraits in the studio. We're here with Chiara today and we're going to be using a single lighting setup, so just using one strobe light, one softbox, one stand, and that's everything you're going to need for this studio photo shoot. So nothing too crazy, but you can still get amazing results with just one light if you know how to use it, know how to position it correctly, know how brightly to use it, and know how to use your modifier to get the most flattering light possible for your photos. So we're gonna have a look at a few photos. We're gonna break down those photos and talk about the lighting, how the light was positioned, the camera equipment we used, the camera settings as well, a bit about posing, and then we're gonna go into Photoshop and edit one of these photos and go from start to finish of the process on getting this photo looking how it is. So to begin, let's talk about this photo in particular. Now, if you wanna take a photo like this, there are a few things that you're going to need. Firstly, you're going to need a softbox and a strobe so you can get the nice soft light that you can see here. And I'd recommend something around the 38 inches size for softboxes. Uh, this particular example was an octo box, but you can use a square softbox if you would like or anything really, um, but I like to use octo boxes. So what else you need for this photo shoot is you're going to need a long lens because as you can see in this photo, it's quite cropped in and there's quite a lot of compression in the view of this image. And that's because I was shooting on an 85 mm lens. So you could use a 18 to 55 lens if you're using an APS-C camera, or you could use something like a 70 to 200 or a 24 to 70 at the long end or anything really that's gonna give you a short telephoto zoom range. For the strobe, I used a Jinbei DM5, but you can use pretty much any strobe that you have. I don't really think it makes that much difference um, in this situation because you're not gonna have to use the strobe on really high power because in the studio settings, you can actually use quite low power normally with these strobes. And in this instance, I think I had the strobe on three and a half out of 10 power. So quite a low setting because we're in the studio and we have a lot of control on the light and we're not trying to overpower the sun or another bright light source. If you take a look at the position of the strobe in this video, you can see that we are 45 degrees above and to the side of Kiara here so that we can get some three dimension in the light where part of her face on her left is bright and illuminated, whereas the, her right hand side of her face is dark and in shadow. And we want to get this softbox as close to our model as we can without it getting in frame. And that is because the closer your softbox is to your subject, the softer the light is going to be. This also means though, because we're so close to the light, we have to dial down that light quite low power so that we can get a nice exposure over the entire image. You can see in the background that the background itself is quite bright, and that is because um, we have positioned Kiara here to be quite close to the background. And you'll see in this photo as contrast, we're using the same background, but it's much darker because we've moved our light and also our model away from the background, which means it's not getting as much light from the softbox and appearing darker. And you can decide whether you'd like to have a bright background or a dark background, depending on the mood of your photo, but uh, just changing the position of your model and light compared to the background makes a big difference in the lighting of the background and also the separation you'll get uh, from the foreground and background of your photo. So now let's have a chat about camera settings. And in this photo shoot, I was pretty much shooting at an aperture of around 5.6 the whole time. I was shooting at a shutter speed of about 1 1 60th of a second the whole time. And then also the base ISO of my camera. And I was jumping between two different cameras, the Canon 5D Mark IV and the Sony a7R II. And I was using the native ISO of both of those cameras each time, which is 100 and 200. So I was shooting at these low ISOs so I could get the cleanest signal to my sensor so that I didn't have any grain or noise in my images and the highest dynamic range so that I can edit them to the best of my ability at the end. I was shooting at an aperture of f5 because I wanted a lot of things to be in focus here and I didn't want to have a blurry depth of field because there really wasn't anything in the background distracting from the image. I'm shooting at 1 1 60th of a second because this is a nice shutter speed to keep everything sharp in the image. And also I wasn't using high speed sync or anything like that. So these strobes at the time had a max shutter speed sync rate of 1 to 50th of a second. So what that means is I could shoot and every single time get a nice light going into my sensor from the strobe and not having any syncing issues by going too quickly with my shutter speed. So one thing that I think no one really ever teaches you and something that I think is super, super important in photography is that you have two different ways of separating your subject from the background. And those two ways are using light and using a shallow depth of field. 
You can see in this photo here from another shoot I did that the background is really well separated from the foreground because it is so blurry. And this shot was actually done with all natural light and no off-camera flash whatsoever. You can get a beautiful light and a beautiful separation between your focus and between your background purely by using a shallow depth of field to blur out any distractions you have in the background. So that is one easy way that you can get rid of any distractions in the background and add that separation. But let's say that you don't have a lens that can shoot at low apertures, maybe you only have the kit lens or something like that. You do have the option of using the lighting conditions to add that separation. And you do that by adding three dimensions to your light by giving your subject a lighter side and a darker side, and also making the background either much brighter or normally much darker than your foreground to add that separation. So if you just keep those two little tricks in the front of your memory when you're shooting, I think it really will make a big difference to your photography. Now, if you're enjoying this video so far, please make sure to hit that like button and also to hit the subscribe button so that I can pay for my electricity bill this month and give my hamster Jeremy some treats as well. It really does help me out here on YouTube trying to make this a full-time job, so I really appreciate all of you who do subscribe. Now, before we get into the editing and look at how we can edit a photo like this to really make the most out of our lighting, we're gonna look at a little bit of posing and how you can position your model to make the most of the photo. So one thing you don't want to do when you're shooting in the studio or shooting portraits, you don't want to have your model looking stiff and looking straight. It's always gonna be more aesthetically pleasing to have your model on an angle and also make their body and make their face a little bit more expressive, a little bit more dynamic. And the more comfortable and loose they are, the better the photo is gonna look because they're going to look more comfortable and it's really going to show a more natural and beautiful portrait. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, now it's time for my favorite part, which is the editing of the photo. Now you can follow along in Photoshop or in Lightroom. I'm gonna have a link to the raw files in the description so that you can edit along if you choose. And I think that the editing section is the place where you can really make your images stand out. So now let's jump in and see what we can do with this image. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add some clarity to the entire image just to make the mid-tone contrast pop a little bit more and separate Chiara here from the background. Then we're gonna add a bit more shadows and also boost the exposure a bit just so that we can have the brightest part of the images so bright that they are still in the range, the dynamic range, but and not clipping, but right at the end there just so we can get the most dynamic range out of the photo. We're also gonna mess around with the blacks a little bit there and just a little bit of contrast too. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of skin smoothing and I don't have much time for this video so I'm just gonna do a rough skin smooth with the clarity tool. So I'm basically using the exposures, blacks and shadows here as a masking tool. I've just dropped them all the way down to 100 so you can see exactly where I'm selecting. And once I've selected all the areas that I would like to smooth out, I'm going to reduce the clarity and that's going to remove any blemishes or imperfections that you can see in the skin. Now this is a really rough tool, so it's not something you would do if you were doing uh, some really important work for like a uh, fashion editorial or something like that. But um, if you're just wanting to do a quick skin smoothing, this is a fantastic way to smooth skin. Now you'll notice that I'm not going over any lines that I'd like to keep hard. So things like the nose, the lips, the eyes, that kind of thing. I'm only making a selection of the areas of the skin that I would like to be smooth. So it's not an exact science and you can overlap lines a little bit, uh, but try to only select the parts of the skin that you would like to make smooth. So I like to do the face, I like to do hands, any big pieces of skin, so the chest and the neck area as well. Uh, arms are good as well because it really hides veins and that kind of thing. And also I'm gonna do the knees here as well. So this can take a little bit of time. Make sure to take your time. Don't go over any of the lines that you don't want to be smooth. So now we've got all the areas that we'd like to smooth. We're just gonna remove those blacks, shadows, and exposures, and just drop the clarity. And now when we zoom in, you can see the skin is looking a lot smoother. So now what I'm gonna do is going to make the eyes pop here by adding some exposure, some clarity, and also a little bit more color into those eyes. Now you don't wanna to go too crazy with this, otherwise it's gonna look unnatural, it's gonna look a bit strange, but just adding a little bit really draws focus to the eyes of the portrait, which is the place that you want your viewer to look first. So we're gonna even add a little bit more contrast and clarity uh, to the eyelashes, just to make them stand out more because dark, thick eyelashes are considered beautiful. So adding a little bit more contrast there really does make a big difference. 
So the next thing we're gonna do here is just add a little bit more clarity, color as well, and a little bit of darkness to the hair. And that's just gonna make it look more textured. It's gonna add more detail to the image and just make it look more appealing and it's gonna pop from the image a little bit more as well. So these are all gonna be very subtle changes, things that um, might not make much of a difference by themselves, but once you've added everything together, it makes a huge difference to the image. So one extra thing we're gonna do here is just add a little bit of clarity to the shirt, to Kiara's shirt here. And that's basically just to add texture to the shirt so you can see all the creases. It just makes the image look a little bit more interesting. So I like Kiara's jeans here, but I think they'd look even better if they were a little bit more colorful. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more blue into the jeans here, just using the brush tool to add more uh, saturation into the jeans. We're going to also use the color balance here as well, just to make it a little bit more blue. I'm trying not to go over any areas that aren't the jeans, just because I don't want to give her skin a blue color cast um, and it'll look a bit unnatural if it did, um, did that. So now let's jump into native Photoshop. Now we're done with camera raw and let's get rid of some of those sensor dust spots that you can see in the image. Now I should have cleaned my sensor really before this shoot, so I didn't have to do this. So don't do what I do here. Make sure to clean your sensor before your photo shoot so you don't have to edit out any dusty spots that you can see. These wouldn't um, show up if I was shooting on a low aperture, something like f1.8, but if you're shooting above about 2.8, you're gonna start seeing dust spots on your sensor if your sensor isn't clean. So now I've removed all of the obvious dust spots. The next thing I'm gonna do is use the patch tool and the content aware deletion tool just to smooth out the skin a little bit more and do a little bit of separation here and get rid of any blemishes I see on the skin. So I'm just going to fast forward this section just cause it takes a little bit of time. Um, see you in a couple of minutes after I've done all of this skin smoothing. Okay, now we are done smoothing the skin on the face. We're gonna do a little bit more just on the arm where there's a little bit of a vein there. Just these little subtle changes, something you wouldn't really notice if you just did that by itself, but once we've changed everything, it does make the image look much better. So now we're gonna to go to filter and then liquify and basically just make the hair look a little bit more full and thick. And I really think this makes a huge difference with portraits because thick hair, full hair is a sign of health and it's a sign of beauty. So making hair look a little bit thicker really makes a huge difference in your portraits. So don't go crazy with this. Um, I think I went a little bit too far here on the right hand side. So I'm just gonna use the liquify tool again once more just to pull that back in. So I just make my brush a little bit smaller there and just a little sharp area there, just pull that back in. So when you're doing uh, any changes to your portraits, just remember that you can always make a mistake and change it if you don't like it. And you'll see here, I'm gonna do that again. I'm going to actually change the color of the lips. Um, but once I've done the change, I realize it doesn't actually look that good. So I change it back. But if you're interested in what I'm doing here, I'm basically making a selection and I'm going to the hue and saturation sliders, just looking at the red slider, boosting the saturation all the way up to the top so I can see what colors I'm changing and then just dragging around those sliders there. So I'm only getting a selection of a certain color, which is the lips in this instance. And then I'm just changing the saturation of that particular color so that I can change just the lips in this uh, particular edit. But you can see here that the lips are looking a little bit unnatural after I've made this change. So I actually change it back to how it was before uh, because I think it looks more natural and looks just better in general. So this is the final image after all of those edits. I really hope you like it. The raw files are gonna be in the description if you would like to um, edit this photo yourself and send it to me on Instagram. I really enjoy seeing how everyone else edits these photos. If you haven't subscribed already and you got this far, make sure to subscribe. I really appreciate it if you do subscribe and thank you very much for watching. So I will see you in the next one.